Good morning, Jackie Robinson Foundation. Good morning, Jackie Robinson Foundation. How are you? Let's give yourselves a round of applause for being up and bright and early this morning, ready for a wonderful day, energetic, fun-filled day full of learning and networking. Uh, how were your cultural outings last night? Yeah, good, good. Conference going well so far for you? Wonderful, wonderful. Before we get started with the program, I'm going to bring Ivo back up. As you remember, Ivo promised to personally, out of his own pocket, give a scholar some money from yesterday's uh, communications activity. So before we get started, let me let Ivo do what he needs to do. Let's see if they're paying. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. Morning. Morning. See, now y'all rock. Good morning. Good morning. You know, we like to honor our commitments, and that's one of the things that we, we are part of at CRF. We have integrity. And Ms. McKinney got the what's the matter, what's the matter did you eat yet scenario. <laughs> I have You got it, you got it. All right, so we are, the, the, the team here at the foundation is very excited for, uh, for this morning's presentation and program. Uh, we're going to be conducting a mock presidential caucus. Um, so we're, we're very excited to um, you know, uh, see your views and, and hear from you all about your uh, concerns and uh, your thoughts about this year's election and, and uh, uh, candidates. I am going to bring up my colleague, Jamari Selders, who is going to introduce today's program and um, our participants for uh, this morning's proceedings. Jamari? Good morning, everyone. In wake of the upcoming presidential election, we will conduct a formal mock caucus in which nine of our very own JRF scholars will act as representatives for each presidential candidate. Not only will this be a time for our scholars to gain a better understanding of how the presidential election works and the voting process as well, but it also provides everyone with the opportunity to gather more information for themselves regarding the various platforms of these candidates. At this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator for today, Rayshawn Payton. Mr. Rayshawn Payton is currently serving as the legislative director to Representative Kendra Horn, where he manages her votes, entire legislative strategy, and policy positions on the House Committee on Armed Services. Prior to his current role, Mr. Payton served as Associated Director to the Senate Democratic Steering and Outreach Committee under current Senate Democratic Leader Chuck E. Schumer and former Senate Democratic Leader Harry Reid, where he was responsible for promoting the Democratic Caucus policies and initiatives on behalf of Senate Democratic leadership. Mr. Payton also served as a legislative staffer for Representative Mike McIntyre. Prior to working in the House and the Senate, Mr. Payton interned for the Office of Public Engagement under President Barack Obama and for the Oklahoma County District Attorney's Office. Mr. Payton earned a Juris Doctor at the University of Oklahoma College of Law and a dual Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and Government and Economics at Oklahoma City University. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rayshawn Payton. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Welcome scholars to our first ever JRF mock presidential caucus. Here's a brief overview of the rules. Scholars will first hear from the New York State delegate for the Democratic National Convention, Nye Whitaker. The scholars will then visit each booth and receive information about the candidates in his or her platform. Following that, scholars will take out their phones and open the Crowd Compass app to anonymously vote for the candidate that they would like to support. Representatives from the top three candidates from this initial vote will then come to the stage and present one by one a brief explanation or overview of their respective candidates platform. Following each representative's brief presentation, the general body, body of scholars will be allowed to make any comments they would like to make. Scholars will then vote a second time through the Crowd Compass app on the poll. However, they vote on the top three candidates from the initial poll results. Now for our special guests. Nye Whitaker is an entrepreneur, educator, philanthropist, and community organizer. She has founded three companies over two decades to address the growing needs of her broad and eclectic client base. Ms. Whitaker is responsible for the company's overall vision, branding, 
political and community partnerships, managing client relations, and oversees the strategic development of all client projects. Ms. Whitaker has more than 20 years of experience in government and pu in public affairs, event management, business development, sales, fundraising, and marketing, which she honed while serving in leadership positions in the technology, entertainment, toy, gift, education, healthcare, nonprofit, and media industries. She leverages proven industry best practices, mission-based marketing, access to her extensive personal and professional network, and cost-saving methodologies to help organizations maximize their human and financial capital to innovatively extend project expectations. Ms. Whitaker is a political strategist and active community leader. In 2012, Ms. Whitaker had the privilege of telling the story about her fight to improve educational options for children in New York City prior to introducing President Obama when he spoke at the Apollo Theater. She is involved in a participatory budgeting project and a county, commi county committee member and event director for the Manhattan County Democratic Party and a New York State delegate for the Democratic National Convention. Ms. Whitaker helped uninsured New Yorkers get covered and was featured in an advertising campaign to launch New York State Health under the Affordable Care Act. She is known to frequently donate her services to nonprofits seeking to improve fundraising results and board engagement. Nye Whitaker holds a degree in psychology, marketing, journalism. She serves on the board of the Association of Fundraising Professionals, the International Special Events Society, and Meeting Planners International, and the alumni board of the Covenant of the Sacred Heart, where she founded the school's first minority financial aid endowment to increase diversity in the upper school. Please welcome Nye Whitaker. Good morning, everyone. It's a little too quiet in here. I agree with the gentlemen who were up here before. So I know you're eating, but I'm gonna ask you to take a moment and I want you to actually stand up because you're gonna need to practice something with me. I come from a place and a space where we are interactive and engaged all day, every day. The food will still be there. All right, so I want you to turn to your neighbor and you're gonna repeat after me. You ready? If you got some food left in the mouth, just take a nice, deep, long swallow. All right, turn to your neighbor, and you're gonna say, you matter to me. Your success matters to me. Your vote matters to me. Your voice matters to me. Your future matters to me. You matter to me. You, matter. you can sit down, scholars. See, now I know you're awake because I hear y'all humming. So good morning, scholars. Good morning, scholars. Good morning, scholars. Good morning. My name is Nye Whitaker, and as they described already, I wear many, many hats. But one of the ones I'm proudest and most important of is my role in civic engagement because civic engagement has changed my life and my community. And I hope that by the end of your day today, you'll be considering how civic engagement can help you succeed on your journey in life. So as they said, I kind of got the political bug when I met a man in Chicago named Barack Obama. And there's just a little video clip that I wanna share so we can put things in context. So I'm hoping the AV guys, the great team upstairs can help me by showing the quick video. Thank you. Now my honor to introduce the first sitting president to ever speak at the Apollo Theater. Please welcome to Harlem, Barack Obama, the president of the United States. Hello, Harlem. Good to be here tonight. I'm so in love with you. I believe as a So I don't know if you guys remember how we all felt when we had a president who looked like us, who spoke to us, 
who thought like us, who cared about us, who was intelligent. Do you guys remember that? Seems like a really long time ago, doesn't it? So I'm really excited that part of your morning while you're here is this mock caucus. I don't know if anybody watched, by raise of hands, did anybody watch the uh, South Carolina primary last night? It's okay if it's only a few of you. I'm proud, be proud, raise your hand high. So last night was a very important turning point because there had been two caucuses prior to that primary. And the first two caucuses, one was in Iowa and one was in New Hampshire, both of which have higher than a 95% white population. South Carolina was the first primary for this year of which the black vote was the resounding vote. And they selected, does anybody know who won last night? You can call it out, Joe Biden. So that changed the game. You had two other candidates who were in the front lead, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, Pete Buttigieg, or Mayor Pete, as a lot of people call him. And then last night, all the tables turned. And why is that? That is because the black vote matters. And it's important that as you go through this process, you think about how politics affects every part of your life. A lot of people say they're not political, but politics affects your tuition at school. Politics affects how much you paid for your taxi. Politics affects how much you pay for your food, how much you pay for your clothes, how much you pay for your hair, how much you pay for your nails. People don't think about that. The milk on your table or in your fridge. People think, oh, I'm not political. Pol politicians are corrupt. Civic engagement is not for me. Civic engagement affects every part of your life from the minute you wake up to the minute to go to sleep. So you've got to be in it to win it. So I hope that you will enjoy this caucus process and I will come back up when it's over to talk to you a little bit about your experience and what it means to our future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nye, for those amazing words. All right, scholars, it's about time to get the show started. Before we get started, though, I want to remind everyone in the room that the Jackie Robinson Foundation is a nonpartisan organization. And as we go through this part process, we're going to respect everyone's political views, whatever they decide to do. Thank you again, Nye, so much. And at this time, I want to invite all scholars to get up and make your way from booth to booth around the room and find your special political candidate. And we'll meet back here in about 30 minutes. Thank you.
Excuse me, scholars, quick announcement, quick announcement. In addition to the papers that are on each of the representatives tables, if you go into the Crowd Compass app and click on this event, underneath um, the schedule, you'll find a link to each of the candidates platform and bio if you don't want to carry around the papers as well. So that's an option also. Scholars, can I have your attention for a brief moment? Can I have your attention for a brief moment? Scholars, as we go about the caucus uh, process, I want to point out the photos that are behind us. Um, the photos will display uh, quotes from Jackie Robinson about the importance of voting. You'll also see uh, you know, photos from the March in Selma and also from the Voting Rights Advancement Act. So look at these historic photos that you know, talk about uh, what our forefathers you know, stood on and, and the importance of voting as you go through this process. Thank you.
Okay, scholars, let's start making our way back to our seats. It is time to cast your vote. Okay, scholars, I hope you all got a good time learning about uh, the different political candidates here because it's time to vote. We're now going to do live polls together for our mock, mock caucus, so please take out your phones. Everyone, please take out your phones. Live polls can be found on our MLC app. Go to the MLC app and click the Live Polls and Surveys button. We will start with our Sunday plenary Mark Caucus voting one poll. Answer the poll first round voting and select the candidate that you would most likely support below. And we will all see the live results together. We'll give it a minute or two as this is it's moving real time. All right, scholars, we'll give it 60 more seconds before we lock in the vote. Okay, scholars, there we have it. These are the results of the first round of voting. From one to three, it is Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Joe Biden. At this time, I would like to invite to the stage a representative from the Joe Biden campaign. Hi everyone, I'm Madison, and I'm representing Joe Biden. Um, so his whole platform is about restoring the soul of American democracy. Um, in terms of the issues, he's for raising the federal minimum wage to $15. Um, in terms of criminal justice, he wants to get rid of private prisons. He wants to end cash bails, and he wants to end mandatory minimums. Um, in terms of citizenship, he wants a pathway to citizenship for all dreamers and kind of wants to keep immigration policies pretty similar to how they are now, no drastic changes. Um, for colleges, he wants two years of free community college for everyone. Um, gun laws, he's interested in um, manda er, buyback programs and also mandatory universal background checks. Uh, for healthcare, he he um, isn't for like a Medicare for all situation, but he 
is interested in kind of expanding the public option so that everyone who wants healthcare can have it, um, but still keeping the private option intact. Um, I'm trying to think about anything else. I feel like, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for that job. Well done. Would anyone from the audience who is supporting Vice President Biden like to get up and make a quick remark uh, to other supporters in the room? Anyone else? No takers? Okay, we'll move on to our second candidate. Would the student representative for Senator Elizabeth Warren please come to the stage? So Elizabeth Warren, um, the biggest thing or the biggest policy that she's famous for is her wealth tax. So she wants to tax the extremely, extremely, extremely rich, about $50 million to accrue upward of $2 trillion in the next five years or so. With this money, she wants to put a down payment on the Green New Deal, which um, has the goal of decreasing our carbon footprint as close to zero as possible by the year 2030. Um, she wants to um, She wants to address and implement student loan forgiveness programs, and she wants to implement universal child care programs with this wealth tax. She also wants to allocate about $100 billion to address the opioid crisis and um, public health crisis, and she wants, to, um, she wants to allocate about $10 million to Puerto Rico to be able to rebuild their infrastructure and rebuild their economy and actually treat them like they're U.S. territory unlike they've been treated before. Um, she also wants to address prescription drug costs, which are skyrocketing. I don't know how familiar you guys are with the healthcare system at all, but just to put a little anecdote to it, people will go to Canada for a vial of insulin about this big for $30, um, when it's $1,000 here in the United States per month to be able to have that insulin. So she wants to be able to address that with the prescription healthcare costs and the prescription drug costs and be able to reduce that in the United States. Um, she also wants to be able to take money out of the lobbying system. So. Uh, eliminating wealth from lobbying and eliminating money from voting and voter suppression. Um, those are her biggest points in her platform. Excellent job. Thank you so much for that. Would anyone like to come to the front and give a few words of support for Senator Warren? Brief 30 second pitch to win over your fellow JRF scholars. And last but not least, we will have our representative from Senator Sanders' campaign. Hi, my name is Mary Wright, and I'll be representing Bernie Sanders. Um, basically, Bernie Sanders is a president for the people, not just for himself. Um, he's basically trying to end um, injustice for all the marginalized groups. Um, one of his key platform points is guaranteed college for all and to cancel student debt. Um, he basically wants to um, guarantee free public college, um, um, HBCUs, um, minority-based colleges and trade schools. Um, by doing this, he's essentially going to end up ending the equity gap. Um, he also wants to donate $1.3 to private colleges. In addition to the college for all, he also um, wants to guarantee Medicare for all. Um, by doing this, he's gonna stop pharmaceutical companies from ripping off Americans by making them pay less than $200 um, a year for Medicare. He also is a strong supporter for the Green New Deal. Um, the Green New Deal is basically his stance on climate change. Um, it'll save us a lot of money and it'll also take, us, um, take a lot of money away from the um, military um, and get them out of the foreign war conflict. Um, in addition to that, Bernie Sanders also supports um, LGBTQ community as well as other marginalized groups. Great job. Would anyone like to come to uh, the front and give a few words in support for Senator Sanders? Yes. Okay, 
I don't, I, don't have very, I don't have very much time here, but one of the things that's very important to focus on for Senator Sanders is that he is the only peace candidate. He is the only candidate that is out here that is genuinely trying to win for, or excuse me, end foreign wars and all of the motives for fighting them. When the United States CIA overthrew the government of Bolivia and possibly of Venezuela and the, Donald Trump made illegal strikes against Iran, Bernie Sanders was the only candidate to unequivocally come out, not against Donald Trump making these strikes, but the ethics of these strikes entirely. He is the only peace candidate that wants to restore the United States credibility in the rest of the world by not overthrowing other, go other governments and also ending, as our, as our previous speaker said, ending our need to engage in illegal foreign wars in Iraq and Afghanistan in pursuit of more oil. He is the only candidate that is trying to stop all of these things wholesale and prevent the United States from being dragged into more endless boondoggles in the Middle East and in South America. And that is one of the hugest drags on our economy and we should always think about this in terms of where America stands in the world. Thank you very much. Great job. Very well done. One more audience remark. remark? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to say the issue of Medicare for all became very personal for me. Uh, this past December, I went to a doctor's office. They actually called me for a checkup. I went there, no problem. Uh, but I get a $400 bill in the mail after I had already gotten my service just from my doctor to tell me my blood pressure and for him to say that, um, for him to tell me my blood pressure and just tell me to drink more water. So I don't understand why I would have to pay $400 just for that. A Medicare for all system would eliminate that. One more thing, all of these candidates that were involved in the second to last debate, all of them said they would support a few delegates and superdelegates overruling the voice of the American people and the public to vote for who should be president. That should not be allowed to happen. And I'm not a very outgoing person. I'm actually terrified to be up here right now, but I support Senator Sanders so much that he has motivated me to come up here. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. And Jareff Scholars, you've heard from your top three amazing candidates, so it is now time to cast your final vote. Let's do the next question. Go to live polls and surveys again and click the Sunday plenary mock caucus voting to poll. Answer the second round voting. Select the candidate you would most likely support below. And we will give it a minute since it's a close race. Thirty more seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have it. Without further ado, the winner of the JRF Mock Presidential Caucus is Senator Bernie Sanders. Would the Sanders representative like to give a victory speech to the audience? <laughs> I love it. Well, well, guys, thank you so much. Sure, absolutely. Come on up. Come on up. Okay, thank you. We won here. We won today in this room because the people, the young people of this country, we remember 2008. We remember 2016, and we know that this economy is not working for us. As the stock market begins to tumble, we need big ideas and big change to, un to 
understand what's going on and to fix the problems that this country has. It's not just about beating Donald Trump, it's about really thinking about Medicare for All, the Green New Deal, and the real concrete ideas that we're going to need to radically change the way the American economy works over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Thank you all so very much. Dear God, please know when your primary and primaries are. Register to vote. Order your absentee ballots. And, and dear God, <laughs> just, just show up. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. So well spoken. I'd also at this time like to invite Nye Whitaker back to the stage to explain the importance of voting and the role that she plays in this process. Nye Whitaker. So thank you for participating in that. And actually what that brings me to is focusing on civic engagement. As I started my conversation earlier, I believe that civic engagement can help you find success in your life. So I just wanted to make sure we all knew what I meant when I said civic engagement. So civic engagement is working to make a difference in your community by improving the quality of life through both political and non-political processes. So it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, part of the Green Party, um, part of no party, uh, party of one. It doesn't really matter as long as you're involved and engaged. And we just saw through that amazing process what that was like. Each of you got up from your table, you spoke to someone who represented a different candidate, and you made a vote. So I want to ask you, how many people in the room are registered to vote? Whoa! Can you give yourselves a round of applause? So how many people in here can tell me the date of the November presidential election? November, I, I want a date, any dates? Tuesday, November, someone's gonna pull out their phone and look it up and shout out the right answer. They're gonna Google it. Thank you! So I wanna make sure that everybody marks December 3rd on their calendar and that they come out and vote for the presidential candidate that they prefer. Now we're just gonna to switch topics and talk a little bit about some of the important movements that have taken place. So how many people have heard of the Me Too movement? Raise of hands. How many people heard about what happened in Ferguson? How many people heard about the Women's March? How many people heard about the March on Washington? How many people heard about the March in Selma? Those were all movements led by civic engagement. The next most important movement that we can play a role in is going to be the census. So the census started in 1910 and has happened every 10 years since. But because African Americans were considered three-fifths of a person, they were often left out. The census controls billions of dollars that um, are used for public housing, public education, improvements to transportation, and all of the support services that we get from our government. So it's important that we get counted, and that will take place on March 12th. And really, it's a form that has 10 questions, it takes 10 minutes, and it determines the resources for the next 10 years in your community. It also determines your representation. So I'll tell you a very interesting story. Once, in Kentucky, all of a sudden on the census, they had a large population, so what they thought were South Americans, because people in Kentucky checked that they lived in South America as an ethnicity. They lived in the southern part of the continent of America. But that allowed for resources to be sent to Kentucky that were meant for people who are of Latin descent. So it's important that when we fill out our census, we think about what it means to our community to be counted and that we make sure that we read the questions thoroughly and check the box and are civically engaged. And most importantly, for African American communities to get what they deserve because they've often been undercounted. Following the census, the most important thing that you'll be able to do is vote because the census is gonna also determine your representation. You stand to lose or gain representation in Congress by participating in the census. So that means if you want more representation, you have to stand up and be counted. In terms of civic engagement, it's all the movements that you think about and you hear about day to day, and sometimes they go unrepresented in the larger mainstream. It could be parents coming together to start a daycare or to fight to keep a school open. It could be resources for senior citizens that people get together and start doing on their own, like the way that meals started to be delivered to seniors' homes, or the way the Black Panther movement started serving food to people in their communities. Civic engagement is something that you can do every day, all day. It could be checking on your neighbor, it can be helping a friend. 
So I want to just kind of tell you a really quick story. So as you saw in the earlier video, I met Barack Obama in 2007 and had a chance to work on his campaign. Working and lending my time and volunteering and be civically engaged actually gave me the skills that I needed to help save a school in my community, to help build the first hospital, public hospital facility named after an African-American philanthropist in my community. And it also led me the opportunity to start a business, helping to train people of color, particularly women and young professionals to run for office. And to date, we've got 573 candidates that are now currently in office across the country. So I wanna just tell you that as scholars, your talent and your time are the two things that you can't get back. So think about how you use them and use them wisely. Take your time here to make friends and great connections, to learn from the Jackie Robinson Foundation, and to uphold his legacy by being civically involved. So if you have any questions on what you can do tomorrow, whether it's volunteering on a campaign or volunteering in your neighborhood to be civic engaged, I will be here and I'd be happy to help you take the next step. Thank you. Scholars, please give a round of applause to Nye Whitaker for her amazing participation in, in today's mock uh, primary. Please give a round of applause to our scholar representatives who did a great job representing their political candidates, articulating their points, and also underscoring the, the right to vote. Now I'm going to hand it over to Damien for a quick few words. Let's give a round of applause to Rayshawn Payton. <clears throat> Rayshawn, I don't know if that was mentioned earlier, is a Jackie Robinson Foundation alum. Um, so again, we keep all this talent in the family and we're so uh, pleased to have him back with us again this morning. So we're done with our mock caucus. Um, let's again congratulate and thank our uh, scholar representatives from each campaign. Let's give them a good round of applause. And thank you to our scholars who came up and uh, spoke on behalf of uh, the candidates they were passionate about. That was, that was fantastic. Thank you for that. So just a few words of housekeeping. Uh, we're done uh, formally with our, our Sunday morning breakfast. As you all know now, we're going to move into our career sessions. So make sure you check your schedule. Go to the career session that you signed up for. Uh, we are, our, our space is, uh, uh, every seat has uh, been uh, assigned, um, so there is no move, room for you to move to one that you may, maybe didn't sign up for and now you want to go to. So again, go to the uh, session that you signed up for. They begin at 9.45. They will run until um, 11, 11 o'clock, and then you have your second uh, set of career sessions that will then begin uh, at 11.15. All right, so again, uh, you've got about 15 minutes, 20 minutes before we move into our next session, so don't go too far. Uh, 9.45 for your first career panels. After our career panels this morning, we will move on to our scholar recognition lunch, which will be again back here in the Broadway ballroom, um, and we look forward to seeing you all later. Enjoy your morning. Feel free to take the uh, camp campaign uh, posters if you'd like. Feel free to take the campaign posters with you. And we actually have one more announcement from Jamari about um, one of our uh, gift prizes. So this morning's um, prize for social media interaction, we took from the JRF family platform for this gift. Um, so Cheyenne Melwood, where are you? Thank you. 